Hi, gang. Uh, my radar meteorologist Matthew Capucci with a special tour of the tropics. We've got storms in virtually every ocean basin worldwide. Tammy's in the Atlantic, and she could soon have a friend. Norma hit Cabo San Lucas in the Pacific, and now Otis has formed and is about to soak Mexico's west coast. In the Indian Ocean, Cyclone Tej is lashing Yemen and Oman with heavy rains, and a new tropical storm just formed in the Bay of Bengal. And as if that wasn't enough, we've got this little bundle of joy named Lola east of Australia too. Obviously plenty busy, so we'll dive right in. I was actually out sick last week, so my apologies for not being here, and sorry if I still sound a little bit rough. By the way, if you don't already, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I have some really cool previews of our Balloon Fiesta Eclipse trip coming up on there, and of course we'll have a full video here in the My Radar app. So starting with the Atlantic, here's Hurricane Tammy, which was located about 260 miles north of Anguilla and is moving north at 7 miles per hour. Over the weekend, its inner core largely avoided the northern Leeward Islands to the east, but then it did march across Barbuda. Now it's well north of the Lesser Antilles at present. You can see it on infrared satellite looking a little ragged right now. It's ingesting some dry air, which is bad for it, but upper level winds are actually relaxing some, which might help it to expand and organize a little more. Tammy is expected to drift northeast for a couple days before turning west. That's as it feels this trough, or this dip in the jet stream, which will pinch off what we call a cutoff low. That cutoff low will tug Tammy westward. Tammy may hit Bermuda late week or by the weekend with strong winds, rough surf, and heavy rain squalls. Then we've got this little bugger, Invest 95L in the Bay of Campeche. It's a roiling mass of convection, thunderstorms, but without a cohesive low-level circulation. If it gets one, it could become a tropical depression before it hits Nicaragua on Tuesday. Now let's talk the Pacific. We had Hurricane Norma last week, which zipped from a tropical storm to a 130 mile per hour Cat 4 in just 24 hours time. It peaked in strength last Thursday before weakening. Then it hit Cabo San Lucas on the southern Baja Peninsula as a category one on Sunday. Now it's crossing the Gulf of California as a remnant tropical depression and it could bring heavy rains to Sinaloa, Mexico. Farther south, we have Otis over the open northeast Pacific. It's just a tropical storm, but it's set to ride northeast along the west coast of Mexico, dumping heavy rains that could cause flooding and a few mudslides. Otis, though, formed in a really cool way. This little bridge of land right here is called the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. It divides the Gulf of Mexico and the Pacific and connects North and South America. It's actually only about 134 miles wide. Now, winds from the Gulf blow through and get funneled between these two mountain ranges. That makes a jet of sorts that funnels air out of the Gulf of Tehuantepec. This animation from Zoom Earth shows some of that wind kind of curling back on itself into a counterclockwise swirl. That, in turn, created a lobe of vorticity, or a spin, that eventually spawned Otis. Really neat stuff. By the way, you can check out current winds free in the My Radar app. All you have to do is turn on the wind layer. Now, what else do we have going on in the tropics? Well, this is Cyclone Tej over the Northwest Indian Ocean. It's weakening now, but will soon make landfall in Africa. In addition to strong winds, up to 20 inches of rain are possible near the Yemen-Oman border. Then we have this new tropical storm in the Bay of Bengal. It'll probably hit Bangladesh midweek with heavy rains, but shouldn't be super strong from a wind perspective. And as if that wasn't all enough, we've got Lola in the South Pacific. It's a beastly Category 4 equivalent. Lola could threaten Vanuatu before slowly weakening en route to New Caledonia. Now things do seem pretty busy, but this is actually par for the course in October. The Atlantic, though, is still running 10% ahead of a normal season, and the Pacific is up about 18%. Part of it, coincidence, and part stems from the record warm global ocean temperatures everywhere worldwide. As always, if you like this, feel free to follow My Radar on all social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Tinder, and right here in the My Radar app. And if you didn't like it, you should like it. Bye, y'all. Follow My Radar on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox and Windows.